our sermon series continues, 2020 Vision. And uh, I, I, uh, I've entitled this sermon, Now I See. We've uh, repeated this phrase several times from the old hymn, Amazing Grace. I once was blind, but now I see. And truth be told, if I could go back and change the, the, the title of this sermon, I, I might do that. I, I might change it to something like course correct or pattern interrupt. And I think uh, hopefully by the time I finish this morning, you'll understand why I would have changed the title. But that's not a bad title. But let me ask you a question. Are you awake? Are you alert? You're glad that you're here? You know, I love Grace Presbyterian Church because so many people have said, I don't want to miss a Sunday. And, and, I, and I think there's a lot to that because there's so much joy, there's so much life, there's so much purpose, and there's just so much unexpected that can happen here. You don't want to hear about it. You want to be here so then you can tell about it. It's typically when the children come up here that something is going to happen that... Uh, you know, would surprise or amaze or be worthy of repeating. Uh, but we never quite know what's going to happen in worship. We never quite know what's going to happen when we uh, surrender our lives to Jesus Christ and submit to the will and the way of the Holy Spirit uh, working in our lives. Can I get an amen? amen. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's an exciting adventure, this Christian life. And, and this adventure needs some disruption in it every once in a while, something to catch our attention and make us see something or, or experience something a little differently. Um, maybe the reason we like when the children come up here and Catherine puts the microphone in, in front of them, we never know exactly what they are going to say. I mean, and when little Leo had the opportunity to pray this morning, he had to consult his mother to make sure he was going to say something appropriate, I guess, or <laughs> avoid saying something inappropriate. But that was probably the most attentive you were in the whole worship service. Because you didn't quite know what was going to be said by that. And I think Leo's six-year-old child, and this just coming right out of his heart. But there was another pattern interrupt this morning. Um, during the prelude, uh, Larry Henry came walking up with the flowers. <laughs> did any of you notice that? Raise your hand if you did. Wow. How many of you always look at the flowers? How many of you rarely look at the flowers? How many of you looked at the flowers today like you've never looked at them before? <laughs> there, see? Pattern interrupt. You appreciated them because you looked at them because you hadn't really noticed them before. You were blind. But now you see the flowers. Someone once said, if you think adventure is dangerous, routine is lethal. If you think it, adventure is dangerous, routine is lethal. And routines are part of our lives. They need to be. We have a routine, possibly, when we get up in the morning. It, it, a routine helps us get out of bed and stay on track and kind of get done what we need to get done to know exactly what to do, how we're going to do it, and when we're going to do it. But how do we make room for growth and expansion and new thought and new beginnings and fuller living if we stay stuck in routine. And we are homeostatic beings as homeo sapiens, meaning homeostasis means we like things to stay the same. We don't like our systems to change and we will snap life back into systems when they want to get out of kilter, out of the rut, out of the deep groove of the merry-go-round of life. And my friends, I want you to hear from me because it is from Scripture this morning that I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to us, folks, sometimes you need a path. 
pattern interrupt. A pattern interrupt is a uh, technique. It is a, um, a, 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 a method that is used to change a particular thought or uh, situation in, in an individual's life. And it's used many times by behavioral psychologists and neuro-linguistic uh, experts. And they alter the programming of, of our neuro-linguistic uh, pattern. And, and they use a technique to interrupt and change thought, change pattern for a different outcome. And sometimes we need a pattern interrupt. attention, interrupt the pattern of the chaos and bring them back into focus so that something productive can happen. Pa uh, a pattern interrupt. I, I thought about walking down out of the pulpit right now and start passing the peace with you again. Wait a minute, that's not in the order of worship. <laughs> and Presbyterians, oh, we, we, we are wedded to doing everything decently and in order and sometimes it is to our detriment. It's a good thing that we have order. It's a good thing to have decency. But sometimes we need a pattern interrupt. This past Valentine's, I hope you remembered it was Valentine's on Friday, um, we experienced a pattern interrupt in, in my uh, typical observance with Jeannie of Valentine's. And so I told her on Friday afternoon, honey, we're going to be leaving in about 30 minutes, and um, I need you to be ready. And so we hopped in the car, and I had the GPS plugged into our destination. And so off we went. We got on 85 South, and we kept going, and we got down to uh, the Fort Benning exit. We got off on Victory Drive, and she's like, where in the world are we going? <laughs> well, we were going where everybody was going to go for Valentine's. 4301 Victory Drive. No, it wasn't a tattoo parlor. <laughs> it was Waffle House. So here we are on Valentine's at the Waffle House. And our experience was a pattern interrupt because we walked in the door of Waffle House and there, there wasn't a, you know, a voice from behind the counter, welcome to Waffle House. No, there was, welcome to Waffle House. Do you have a reservation? <laughs> there was a hostess. And I said, yes, a table for two. She said, right this way, Mr. Hasty. And so we went over and sat down at our table. And you could see there was a, there was a black tablecloth with a red runner and silver petals. And look at the candle on the table. And back behind the candle, there is a set menu. When was the last time you saw like a fancy set menu at, at Waffle House? It was absolutely amazing. The jukebox was free and all the songs were love themed. And, 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 our, and our, uh, our, our waitress w was dressed up. She didn't have an apron and all of that. She, she was dressed in all black with a very tasteful red bow tie. And it was a pattern interrupt. It wasn't what you would expect when you go to Waffle House. It was something completely different. It woke us up. And the experience of being there, the food that we ate, the conversation that we engaged in, the music that we were listening to, the other patrons in the restaurant, I saw it all differently and, and with, with fresh and new eyes. I had been blind to Waffle House. <laughs> But now I can really see. You and I, we think um, about 50,000 thoughts a day. Some more, some less. 
But about 50,000 thoughts a day. Did you know that over 95% of your thoughts are the same thoughts that you think every day? That does not leave us new space for new thinking, new ideas, new behaviors, new visions. You know, and Einstein, Albert Einstein, summed it up this way. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is what? The definition of insanity. And if you're like me, we need pattern interrupts in our life, and particularly in our faith lives. We need pattern interrupts to experience new truth, to get to gain fresh perspectives, to discover deeper understanding of something that we that we thought that we knew, but we come to a new and deeper and fuller appreciation of that truth, and we value that treasure in a more significant and life-changing way. We see faith, we see ourselves, we see God in a new way, and it's never the same again. Pattern erupts can do that. They turn us around, and we see life, and we say, gosh, I, I, I never thought that before. I, I, I never knew that. I was blind, but now I see. And very quickly, I want, I want to say that the, that the story that we read this morning from the, from the New Testament, from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, that it has in it two very significant pattern interrupts. One in the story of Saul and his conversion, and the other in the story of Ananias and his conversion as well. There were pattern interrupts. We know about Saul, don't we? Saul is the one who we probably more know better as the Apostle Paul. They're the same person. Scholars, some people think that, that Saul's name was changed at this experience on the Damascus Road, but it was not. Saul is his Jewish name. Paul is his Greek name. And he used both. But we see that later when he is called to the mission field to take the good news of the gospel to the Gentile world, he used his Greek name, Paul, because it would make him more um, relatable to those to whom he was called to serve. I also like the fact that, that the name Paul, that we know him best by, really means little, diminutive, and small. There are descriptions of, of Paul as being a small, kind of bent, long-nosed, ball-headed little guy. And his name fit his description. But he saw himself as small over and against the greatness of his Lord Jesus, who, whom he came to know and love and serve and write about. The Apostle Paul is the one who is the author of most of the New Testament. At least seven, maybe as many as 13 of the letters in the New Testament were authored by this man that we read about this morning, who started out his life as a very devout and orthodox Jew. He had studied under the greatest scholars and rabbis of his day. And he was orthodox, and he was down the line, and he thought that he was pursuing the purity of the temple and the church and the law because of the interlopers that had come in who were now following Jesus Christ, this one who was dead and now was raised and ascended. And he thought he was doing oh so right to, to preserve the church, to preserve the, 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 the religious thought of the day, but he is changed by this pattern interrupt on the road to Damascus to find more of those, those Christians and to bring them to justice and maybe even to death. His life is interrupted. And the Holy Spirit takes away his ability to see. He's blinded. For three days, he has to stop his life, depend on other people. He doesn't even eat or drink during that period of time. But his life is halted, his pattern is interrupted. And because of that experience in his life, he is never the same again. He was blind. Then his eyes were open. And he could see. The same is uh, true for us too, I believe. 
that some of us, some of you are experiencing something of a pattern interrupt in your faith life and it's called Grace Presbyterian Church. I love hearing the stories that you share about this piece of your journey of faith that you never thought would happen or that was not on your scheduled appointments. It was not, it was not um, in, in, in your plan to be in this church or part of this new thing that God is doing. I've heard many say this is the most rich and meaningful part of my Christian walk. I heard that from some of your elders yesterday as we were on a retreat. And that's, that's what they shared. I've, I've never had a more meaningful uh, experience of what it means to be a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ, or a part of his body, the church. One person even said, you know, I used to think about this, this term evangelical with kind of a, a tainted and, and soured view. I, when somebody said evan evangelical, I thought of these evangelists on TVs that just kind of turned me off. But I am understanding what it means to be evangelistic, to be a witness for Jesus Christ. It's changing my life. I love what we are learning, too, about what God is calling us to do and be in the life of this church. And it's, it's kind of a pattern interrupt of sorts. Yesterday, I showed a video that was shown at our national gathering of, of our denomination, uh, actually in 2019. And it's a video that was made by a church in Corpus Christi, Texas, and an exciting ministry that had come into the life of that church called The Kingdom on Wheels. And what this church did is they looked at their context and, and where God had placed them and they saw that they were surrounded by homes that catered to the elderly population. And so instead of trying to attract, attract those individuals into their church, they felt that the Spirit was sending them to those neighbors. And there they were establishing relationships and offering care and support and worship and Bible study and meaning and value and purpose in their lives. And they said, it is changing our lives to be engaged in this kind of a ministry. It was a pattern interrupt for them. And I love what one of the ladies in the video said yesterday that we watched. She said, every human being that is still able to draw breath is worthy of calling into a life-saving relationship with Jesus Christ. I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to interrupt our patterns and show us new ways to know and to show and to share Jesus Christ. I pray that Grace Presbyterian is a pattern interrupt in your life and your seeing life in Christ like you never have before and you're desiring to be called, equipped, and sent in his name in ways that you never thought possible. Maybe to Moscow, maybe to Kenya, maybe to Bradley Circle, who knows. The second pattern interrupt this morning for us to consider. First, it was, the, it was the change in the life of Saul, the Apostle Paul. But the second pattern interrupt here happened to Ananias. You see, with both Saul and Ananias, they thought they had it all figured out. Saul thought that he was doing right, seeking righteousness by the law and, and, and works righteousness, which is self-righteousness, which is really arrogance. But there was some of that going on in Ananias as well, a devout disciple of Jesus in Damascus. And when the Holy Spirit imposed upon Ananias to go to Saul with the word of the Lord and a healing touch to regain his sight and to be called into the service of the Lord, Ananias said, Lord, do you know who you're asking me to go and minister to and pray over and lay hands on? Do you know who Saul is and what he's been doing against you? It was a pattern interrupt for Ananias. Lord, you would send me to him. Lord, you would send me to them. Yes, he 
is my chosen instrument. Who might the Holy Spirit be calling you to go with the life-saving words and healing touch of Jesus Christ that you never thought you would even talk to again, much less engage in this kind of a conversation and relationship? Where might the Holy Spirit be tapping on the door of your heart and whispering in the ear of your spirit to say, listen, there's something new. There's something more. And it will shock and amaze you. I pray that your heart and your ears will be sensitive to what it is the Lord may be calling you to do and to whom the Lord may be calling you to go. These are pattern interrupts that we need so that our hearts and our lives and our eyes will be open to be all that God in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit is calling us to be. <laughs> pattern interrupt. I, th I, think, I think there's some pattern interrupts that are happening and yet to happen for you. You know, Christian life has been said it is not safe. But the Christian life is secure. So yes, we can go on adventures and break lethal routines to find new life. I pray the Holy Spirit is disturbing you in this life-giving way. I want to close with this prayer. It is a prayer by Sir Francis Drake written over a hundred years ago. And we'll close with this. Let us pray. Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves. When our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little. When we have arrived safely because we have sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our, our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly to venture on wider seas where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push into the future in strength, courage, hope, and love. All for the sake of and the glory of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Stand and sing.